Hello, it's me, Griff. Guess where I'm at? Sp I almost said Spotted Owl. I'm not in Spotted Owl. I'm going to talk about Spotted Owls, but I'm in Humboldt Redwood State Park. You know I'm here. I love it here. I can't leave. It's beautiful. Look at it. Just look at it. There's a big old tree right here behind me. Oh, it's kind of hard to see because of the lighting. But, you know, Humboldt Redwood State Park has the most old growth giants. The biggest old growth redwood forest in the world. So I'm going to talk today about spotted owls. And I'm going to talk today about truffles. And I'm going to talk today about dug furs. And I'm going to talk today about flying squirrels. Because they're all connected. So a lot of times when you think about spotted owls, you hear the word spotted owls. It's almost like when you hear about some character, like you hear a bunch of crap you know talked about someone or you like you hear you know this person's like reputation precedes them and you don't really you think you know them because you've heard a lot about them but you really don't know anything about them spotted owls are kind of like that because they're the most environmentally controversial bird in the united states okay and so a lot of people when they hear it especially people who live around here it conjures up images of the 80s and 90s redwood wars and and you know spot the north pacific northwest logging plan and all these kinds of thing management plan so <clears throat> i want to help you think about spotted owls a little bit differently because they're an endangered species that a lot of biologists predict is going to go extinct and i hope that's not true and i hope that biologists and ecological restorationists and you and me can prevent that but um there's a lot of different reasons why they're going extinct, you know, habitat loss and invasive species, but I'm not really going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about their very interesting connection to a fungus, a fungi, and not just any fungi, but a truffle. So a truffle is different than um, a regular mushroom because you're like, that's not a truffle. That's a crazy mutated potato, but it's not, it's a truffle. And a lot of them are delicious. And they don't have, their spores don't come out of the mushroom, out of the gills on the mushroom like other funguses do. Their spores are inside of them. And they have to be eaten. Okay? So what they do is they make this wonderful smell coming from, emanating from the ground. And it smells really good. And you're like, well, spotted owls probably don't have a sense of smell or not a very developed one and don't eat truffles. So where are you getting at? Spotted owls don't eat truffles, but flying squirrels do. In fact, in some places, flying squirrels eat truffles six months of the year. Now, flying squirrels are super interesting in this area because we just discovered three years ago that our flying squirrel is not what we thought it was. We thought it was a northern flying squirrel, um, even though it was smaller and darker. But then they started asking questions and they did some gen genetic analysis and found out it's its own species. So the Humboldt flying squirrel was just discovered three years ago. Isn't that crazy? And it eats tons of truffles. In fact, up to some, in some parts of the Redwoods range, it eats truffles for six months. And it gets those spores inside of it. Because squirrels, flying squirrels can't resist the smell of a truffle. It's, they're like, mmm, what is that? And they go down there and they start eating it. And the spores can pass through their body and out through their poop. And that's how truffles, one of the ways that truffles grow. But, but flying squirrels, their range isn't very big. So when a spotted owl comes along, here's a spotted owl. Aren't they beautiful? And they make a really cool call. It goes, oh, 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 oh. and so you should do that for me and put it in the comments below. Oh, 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 oh. And um, the spotted owl, beautiful, beautiful bird, eats flying squirrels. Can you imagine what that looks like? Flying squirrels fall. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that, but it's probably a pretty epic chase. And then when the when the owl regurgitates the bones and fur, because owls usually regurgitate, they call it owl pellet, all the hair, feathers, and bones. And so if you find one and you dissect it, it's really cool. It doesn't have a tapered end like doo doo. So if you're dissecting something that has a tapered end, chances are you're playing in poop. But um, the oops, the spotted owl's pellet doesn't have a tapered in usually see so that's how you can tell it's not poop and it's usually just like fur and bones and there's a skull in there it's super cool but when it also in this pellet are the truffle spores okay and this is a place that the spotted owl would live and so it would be throwing up pellets with spores in there all over this forest and at the base of this giant tree but the story doesn't end there because truffles aren't just like food you know they're, they got their own life they got their own thing that they're doing they're forming a symbiotic relationship with dug fir trees which do grow in the redwoods especially on the perimeters 
And they have the symbiotic relationship that 95% of the plants in the United States have, and maybe in the world, have with funguses. Redwoods don't. Right? They're one of the few that don't have a relationship with the fungus. But the fungus is mycelia, they're like little thread things. Sometimes you can see them when you're digging in the ground or looking in rotten wood. You'll see those white stringy things. And that's actually the mushroom's real body called mycelium. And that has a symbiotic relationship with Doug fir. It's helping bring phosphorus and water to the Doug fir. And you think, how could that little mushroom do that? Well, inside of a cubic inch of... Um, Soil is miles and miles and miles of, of mycelia. It's mind blowing. Okay. And it's having this relationship with this symbiotic relationship with trees. So we always think about like survival of the most, uh, the fittest, but I think even more common is survival of the most cooperative because symbiotic relationships like between mycorrhizal fungus, mycorrhizal means they're the ones that are going to have this relationship with trees and plants. Um, so the Doug fir needs them. And so the dug fur needs the truffle. The, the truffle needs the flying squirrel. The spotted owl needs the flying squirrel. And the spotted owl also could use old growth dug furs. And when it's throwing up at the base of them, it helps kick off this mycorrhizal relationship. Isn't ecology interesting? Eco means house. Ology, the study of. The study of house. Ecology is fascinating. You can put all, ology on the back of anything and make it cool. Like I could be griffologist. I study griff. You could do the same thing with your name if you're weird like I am. But... I think that we'll stick with ecology and ecologists for this talk and know that when spotted owls go to the Noah's Ark in the sky, that relationship is going to be broke. It's very, very important to have places like Humboldt Redwood State Park with its old growth intact ecosystem so we can learn about these things because like we just found out that our flying squirrel was a different species three years ago, we don't know everything. We have a lot of questions and we don't want things to go extinct before we understand how important they are.